Welcome back to part 15 of setting up the Power Platform Center of Excellence. In this video, we're going to be discussing the nurture components. So with this particular component, there is actually a solution zip file. So we find ourselves within our Center of Excellence environment that we've been using throughout this video series. We've clicked on solutions in the left-hand navigation. And now we're going to click on import solution. I'm going to select browse and I'm going to browse to our extracted COE starter kit zip file. And I'm going to look, I'm going to locate the well-named zip file that is called center of excellence nurture components. So with that selected, we can see here the file name and we're now going to click next. First thing it should come up with after another next is any of the connections because we're quite far down the configuration of the center of excellence. We have most a, a connection available for most of the connectors that are required. So in this case, I'm just going to leave what we have available and then click next. If it wasn't a suitable connection or there was no connection, you would just click on new connection. It will take you as if you've gone to expand Dataverse and gone to connections, selected the connector, and then authenticated. So using the new connection here, it does kind of take you a step further than just clicking on connections in the left-hand navigation, but it, it completely would be okay to create these connections ahead of time. So we're going to click next again, and here we have some environment variables. So as with all of these solutions and becoming less and less so, some of these environment variables were not expected to be populated up front. Some will be optional, but let's take a look and see if we want to fill in any of these now. But equally, we could fill in these after the fact also. So due to the nature of this being nurture components, we've got some links. So link to the feedback form for your training in a day course. So again, that's kind of hinting you can have this training in a day and you might want to link it to say a Microsoft form. So I'm gonna leave that blank. Admin email where, would you, where you would like the communications to be sent from the apps. So I'm just gonna use the same old email address that we've been using everywhere else. Really should have picked a shorter name. So, okay, innovation backlog link. So kind of in big caps here, optional, link to the innovation backlog app if you have it installed and running in your tenants. This lets users add very detailed information about their desired app. So this is uh, allowing your users to kind of build up a list of, of apps that would be beneficial and then you can analyze those apps and decide which ones you may want to take forward. And then we have link to your internal Microsoft Power Platform community. So for this one, we are going to utilize in a previous video i did actually set up um if i can remember the name of it using the the hub template so power platform hub so just as an example it could be the sharepoint site that's backing a microsoft teams team that you've created so we'll just utilize this just, just as an example of something that you could use. So we'll pop that there. For obtaining the Innovation Backlog app, there is a separate self-contained solution zip file. I say self-contained because this is standalone. There's, there's no really kind of requirements of any of the other elements of the Center of Excellence starter kit. But again, you'd come into your extracted COE starter kit zip file and you'd locate the innovation backlog and you would import it as a solution. So I'm just going to quickly do that now, just purely for the sake of obtaining the uh, app URL. So you can't fill in this yet because we don't have it until the solution has been imported. But we'll wait for this to import and then we'll obtain the URL to the innovation log app. 
With the Innovation Backlog solution successfully imported, we can click into it. Once loaded, we'll click on Apps in the left-hand navigation. And then we'll go to the non-admin bit, we'll click on Details and we will copy this link and use it for this variable. You will have noticed the, the variable, we'll just import this whilst I'm talking, the variable for when we imported the innovation backlog component, you won't be able to update it within here because it's managed. So you'll have to actually do it by way of the default solution. But I'm not gonna discuss, I'm, because I'm focusing on the nurture components, I know whilst this is an element of it, I'm not going to go through the configuration of the Innovation Backlog app, or certainly not in this video, but I will put along with the nurture, a link to the Nurture Components documentation, I will put a link to setting up the Innovation Backlog within the description also. Okay, so with the Nurture Components solution having been successfully imported, let's click into it. And the first aspect of the Nurture Components that we're going to take a look at is the Video Hub Components. So this is split into two apps. You've got a model-driven app, which is for the administration of it. And then you've got a Canvas app that will be consumed by makers, the, the bulk of the users. And in, in a nutshell, it is basically a means to add curated content and videos that you can or cannot comment on. I say can or cannot because it's possible to actually set whether people can comment on videos. So the Video Hub admin app Okay, moving swiftly on, I don't, despite the documentation, I don't seem to be able to actually locate these Video Hub admin and normal app, so we'll just carry on. The, the next element is the training in a day feedback form. And this was one of the environment variables. So we could argue or should arguably have done this prior to importing the solution. But I'll, again, I'll put this a link to this in the description, but it's in the nurture components documentation. But you come to this template form, you select duplicate it, The idea is that you can then edit it to your for your own business needs, add in your own questions or, or change any of the current questions. And, and then you would ensure that it's shared with the necessary people that need to fill out the form, copy the link, and then that can be used to populate the environment variables. So if I just do, for argument's sake of this, I'm just gonna copy and then I'll copy that link. And what I shall do is if we come back into here, however, you'll notice that because this is managed, we will not have the ability to update this environment variable there. It's possibly in the command center app. We'll have a quick look. You'll also notice I tried to look for the video hub environment variables and couldn't find them in here either. So it's either changed name or they're adopting a different approach. So training in a day feedback form, and we'll just paste that in there and save. Next, there's three flows relating to training in a day that we're going to turn on, which are these three here. By default, they're turned off. So we're going to turn these on now. So we've got feedback reminder. Let's wait for that one to turn on before we can go to turn on the next. Next, we'll go for registration confirmation. And then finally, we'll turn on the reminder three days prior event. Once all of these flows have been turned on, we'll need to turn on 
similar to a, a lot of these other components, you'll have kind of one app for managing an aspect of it, which should be shared with admins. And you'll have a second one, which will be in this instance for people to actually sign up for the training in a day. So if we come over to apps within the nurture components, there should be two, there should be power platform training management, which is the one which we would share with admins and also making use of the power platform admin security role. So we'll utilize, although I've not security enabled this one. So if you imagine if you security enable the admin one, so it is available, you would add that in here. Whereas we have security enabled the maker one. So if I go to share the one that we'd want to add, ensure that makers are able to make use of, we select our makers. I want to, in this case, send them an email. We've got our power, power platform maker security role, and then we would share. Again, we did specify this when we were importing the nurture, com the nurture components, but there is the maker assessment admin email environment variable, which is basically the email of the admin or team that will respond to queries from the maker assessment app. There is also a flow associated with the maker assessment app, which is called add maker assessment starter data. So let's just come back into cloud flows. So add maker assessment starter data, and we'll turn this flow on. Again, similar to what we did above in terms of ensuring that the right personas can access these apps. We have a maker assessment admin app, and we have a maker assessment app for the makers. So again, because I've not security enabled the admin, but I'm the only admin here, so it still does have access to it, is I'll do power platform makers. Again, making use of our power platform maker security role in terms of the dataverse tables side of things, and then we'll click share. Next, there is a pulse feedback survey. So the warning here is that as part of this process, it does post adaptive cards and the ability to post adaptive cards is not available in GCC, GCC high and DOD environments. So in, in those types of environments, you, these flows should remain turned off. So again, coming back on over into Cloudflows, again, we're doing all of this from within the Nurture Component solution. We have our Pulse Child flow that we want to turn on first. And then once the child one's turned on, we'll then be turning on the Pulse Survey Makers for COE feedback flow. So with that one turned on, we can now turn this one on. Although we've actually got a failure for this one. Let's have a look. It cannot be used as a child workflow because it's never been published. Um, that's either going to be because I did that too soon or it's still not happy. Let's just try and get it on one more time. Uh, yeah, so this time it was successful. Perhaps we did it too too quickly. Next, we're going to discuss the Power BI dashboard to view the Pulse Survey feedback. So if you go back to the previous dashboard video, it will walk you through these steps because I'm not sharing Power BI desktop application. But essentially, you would go into your COE starter kit. There's a Pulse Power BI template file, so .pbit. Launch it is going to ask for the org URL. Now, the gotcha here is that because it uses the TDS endpoint, like it would do if it's a Dataverse for Teams environment, you do not want it to be to specify it with HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. And you also need to remove the trailing forward slash specify. So it literally just specifies you see it here. Get it, save it, publish it to the Power BI cloud service. So you can see this is here. We've got the pulse survey. You'll then want to come in and schedule a refresh. So if you come down to settings, 
uh, we'll edit credentials, we'll sign in, we'll just specify our, our account again, purely doing this to light up the availability of the schedule refresh option, we'll apply 